you decide to walk in the love of God. And then he said we should love one another as he has loved us. Love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus used the good Samaritan as an example. When he said that, somebody asked him, who is my neighbor? He said, let me tell you a story. There was a Jew traveling and he was attacked by armed robbers. They beat him. He was at the point of death. And they took everything. They stripped him off everything. And he was lying by the roadside, gasping for bread. Gradually, getting to his grave. And here come a priest going to church. He got there. He saw him. He said, uh, you know what? I wanted to help you, but I'm late for church. And he passed. And here comes another businessman. I mean, all of them were Jews. He also got there. He said, I wish I could help you. But you see, um, my business partners, I'm supposed to meet them in about 15 minutes time. And I don't want to miss that meeting because the money involved is not a joke. He also passed. Then here comes a Samaritan who has no relation with him. As a matter of fact, it, is, it was even a taboo for a Samaritan to say hi to a Jew in those days. So if that Samaritan loved his life, all he has to do was to look the other way and pass. And he was also on a business trip. He, he wasn't taking a jolly ride. But when he got there, he said, my God, who did this to this man? And the Bible says he got down from his horse, took care of the man, cleansed all the blood, put him on the horse, and took him to the inn, which we will call to the hospital. And he stayed with the man to make sure they take good care of him. And the Bible says the following day, when he was going, he told the doctor, please, take very good care of this guy. When I come back, any extra bill, I will pay. That means he was going to come back. And then, Jesus asked the gentleman, which of this do you think is his friend or neighbor? He said, the Samaritan who did the good thing to him. And Jesus says, go and do likewise. So think about it. They didn't have any relation. He didn't know him. They weren't friends. He has never, they have never met before. So he has never received one good thing from that man. Yet, he demonstrated love. And Jesus is telling you and I, go out there and begin to do that. You know why it is important for, for God, for, I mean, for us to walk in his love? Because that is the only way he can manifest himself to the world. Jesus is not coming down physically again. And so he wants to use you and I to demonstrate his love. And at the same time, the devil also wants to use you to demonstrate his character to the world. And so it's a choice. You can decide today that Father from today, I will never bear grudge against anyone. Anyone that has ever hurt me, I release them, I forgive them, and I will begin to love them with all my heart. And you are not faking it. And when you make that decision, you will be amazed some doors that will automatically open by the force of love. When you begin to walk in love, there are some sicknesses that you wouldn't even have to pray. It will be healed by itself. Because now love is, is working in the body and the body starts to respond. So anything that is not of love must get out. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. But when you walk in hatred, hatred has its byproducts. And those are the sicknesses. The cancers, the tuberculosis, the leukemias, uh, the unnecessary headaches and, and all those things. They are the product of hatred. And once you have let hatred in, it has to bear the fruit. That will not happen to anybody here in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, so church, God wants to use you and I to demonstrate his love. Forget about what you want God to do for you. God already knows it and he doesn't have problem doing it. There is no situation in your life God cannot turn. There is no mountain standing in front of you that he cannot level. Are you understanding me? And so all that God is waiting for is for us to decide to walk in his love, become a complete replica of Jesus in terms of love. That when people see you, they will know how Jesus was. 
when they see the way you live your life, the way you relate, the way you are concerned, the way you are caring, the way you forgive, they will know that Jesus was real. A man was riding a motorcycle, and I think he just cut in front of one guy who was driving a small sporty car. And the guy got mad, and he didn't even realize what he did, so he just pulled into a service station to do something about his motorcycle. And this guy with his friends followed him. He said, this guy just parked behind my motorcycle, jumped out of the car, and started releasing curses. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? What is wrong with you? Say no kinds of words. He said, I turned around and said, I'm sorry if I offended you. Please, will you forgive me? And the guy was still cursing him. And he kept asking, please, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And the guy, so eventually one of his friends in the car said, look, man, will you shut up and listen to what he's saying? Why don't you just forgive? The guy is asking you to forgive him. And the guy kept quiet. And he looked at him. He looked at the friend. He said, man, let's go. And the guy said, excuse me, sir. I want you to know I love you with all my heart. And God loves you more. And that was it. That word he spoke to the guy touched the guy so much that tears started coming from his eyes. Because naturally he was expecting the guy to, you know, hey, you, you speak, I speak. No. <laughs> Love conquers everything. Amen. Now, how do you feel when somebody is cursing you? You see your body shaking. You, you want to release some things. You know, your body is shaking. But the spirit said, no, you are loud. You are made of love. Show love. This is where to win over the devil. And so the best person to love is the one who doesn't like you. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. And so please, from today, go out of here and let every devil know that you had an encounter with the Spirit of God today. Amen. Let every devil know that you had an encounter with the Spirit of love. And from today, by love, I see you conquering every opposition in your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. There is nothing that will be able to prevail against you from today. Amen. Because love is in place. I believe that the Spirit of God brought this word to us today because he said to do something in your life which is going to begin this week. Amen. But the foundation is love. That is why he has laid the foundation. So please, please, I'm begging you in the name of Jesus, release anybody in your heart. It's not worth it. Release them. Let them go. Let love take place. Make a decision to love them. If you have to call them today when you get home, call them. Speak words of love to them. Let them think you are a fool. Very soon, they will be following you to this place. Amen. Amen. Love. Show them love. Somebody did something terrible to you. You see that the person is in need. You, are, you have the power to help. Do it with all your heart. Because it is about your relationship with God. It is not that person that wrote in the Bible that love your neighbor as I love you. Jesus wrote it. So I'm obeying Jesus because I love him. And he has said that those that love me will obey my commandment. Glory be to him. Hallelujah. And he said, when you obey my commandment, my father and I will come and make our abode in Amen. you. Can you imagine that? So for God to live practically in me, it is not by prayer and fasting. Just walking in love. Walking in love. Walking in love. Shall we stand up to our feet?